Uh, the Lord set me free uh, back in 1981. I thought that's the way I was. I, in fact, I'd given up. I would said, this is just the way I was born. I'm going to stop fighting it. I'm going to embrace it. And the minute I embraced it, I dived headlong into a relationship. I'm very ashamed to even admit that. But uh, I gave myself to this life and I expected peace to come. And for a season, I guess it did. But after a while, I became so frustrated, so felt so used all the time. I thought, well, this can't be right either. So I went on this incredible journey of discovery. I cut off this relationship I was in. I decided I'd go on to seminary. And then God began to speak to me three days before I was to go to seminary because a friend called me and said, Dennis, I've been the Lord's been speaking to me about you, which scared me to death because I thought, man, the Lord does not speak to me about me. So what's he saying to this guy? Well, he said, the Lord came to him in a dream. And in this dream, God was giving me music and people all over the world were singing the songs. And he said, to confirm it to you, my mom had the same dream this week. We'd like to know if you'd be interested in moving to Oklahoma City, live with us, give God a chance to work this in your life. So three days later, I'm living in Oklahoma City, driving a school bus to make a living. That's the only job I could find. But God's hand was all over that because what it forced me to do was cry out to God in this sense. Here's homosexuality calling my name. I mean, I'm being tempted, dragged that way all the time. Here's my friend telling me the things the Lord's telling him. So I'm being pulled in two opposing directions and a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I didn't know what to do. I thought, I'm losing my mind. So I... After my morning bus routes, I'd take my Bible, go to my friend's piano, open to Psalm 1 because I remembered the stories of King Saul when he was beset by those evil spirits. They'd send for that shepherd boy to come and play, and I imagined David just worshipped there, and it says the enemy would flee, so I thought, I'll do that for myself. I opened to Psalm 1 and literally began singing through the Psalms. And after a while of singing, I've literally sung through the Psalms, I realized David committed adultery, David committed murder, yet David's commemorated as being a man after God's own heart, and I thought, I want that. And if you can do that for David, Lord, do it for me. Through a series of events, this, this friend who had the dream found out what I was struggling with and confronted me, but he confronted me in love. I'd never had anyone respond to me this way at all. He said, Dennis, I don't know how to help you. He said, I just know I know the answer. I said, what? He said, yeah, the answer is Jesus. I said, I've heard that my whole life. He said, not like this, you haven't. He said, I believe Jesus is the answer so much. I'm willing to walk towards him with you as long as it takes. If you fall down, I will not kick you. I will not tease you. I will not say I told you so. I will just help you up every time. He said, if you need a shoulder to cry on, I'm your guy. If you need someone to yell at when you don't understand, yell at me. I can take it. Mm. I had to go outside the church to find somebody who would love me like Jesus. And that guy did. And he still walks with me to this day. So that in itself, God used in a humongous way. I can't even overemphasize it enough to tell you what just one person stepping outside their comfort zone and saying, here, I'm going to walk with you. I don't even understand it myself, but I know the love of Jesus is the answer. So lo and behold, at a second chapter of Acts concert, November 7th, 1981, I got set free to such a degree I'd only imagined happening. So much healing came in a two-year period that he gave me a wife. And it's true, Melinda and I have nine children. We're not Mormon. We're not Catholic. They're not adopted. <laughs> and yes, we know what causes that. <laughs> but here's the deal. I remember being a little boy sitting in the church pew. By the time I'm 10, I already knew my struggle. And one Sunday morning before church started, I was playing with my brothers and cousins, and I overheard the men who taught me about God from day one discussing what they thought of homosexual. So guess what I thought God thought about me? I thought God hated me. And no one ever told me that I could be free. They only said, you do not get to pass go. You do not collect $200. You get to go straight to hell because of your sin. And I thought, oh my goodness, once the Lord set me free, I'm, if I can help it, I'm not going to let anybody else go without hearing the good news that freedom is possible. Hope is possible. Somebody loves you right where you are, but loves you enough to not leave you there.